Working at NIDA has allowed me to be a little bit more detached from the 30 years of practice. I have to be observing a little more, assessing a little more, and then maybe suggesting things. And so I have a warning for you. What I'm going to talk about today is all suggestion. You are the, you are the educators. But one of the things that I see at NIDA has to do with getting into an Uber car. I climbed into my Uber car in, West Ho in Hollywood, not a great neighborhood. And I looked at him, and he, you know, his dreads, I, his music was a certain thing, and his language was a certain thing. And I was otherwise, I was very aware of my being otherwise. And so I sat in the back of the car and said, hey, how do you like dri driving for Uber? I learned all about his family. This is going way too fast. Learned all about his family. I learned everything about who he was, including he's driving because his son wants to go to law school. He's in production, he is driving for spare time. And I realized, Uber is a laboratory. We can do this as a laboratory and learn a lot about each other. It is also the most, the purest form of a laboratory if you're looking for a cross-section of America. Everybody does it by choice. And so what I've done is to focus on how um, we have lawyers who are prepared, law students who are ready, and clients who are ready. These slides that we've just whipped past, because I think my timing was a little bit off, are, are slides that tell us um, that law students entering now in 2017 um, were in eighth grade when we had the big um, uh, crash, the market crash. They were in kindergarten, when, in first grade, when um, the tech bubble started and collapsed, and they were in sixth grade when the iPhone came out. So they are all about these things, about the media, about video games. Facebook came out when they were in elementary school. They learn and identify with that. My question is, as we as a group talk to them about, you should take this course, here's an additional program, here's how you might structure your day, be sure to take care of yourself, are you drinking too much, um, and there is clinic for you. Are we suggesting to them that they should always pattern their days? And are they talking to any Uber drivers? Because the longer I talk to Uber drivers, and I've asked this question to 20 Uber drivers now, the more humble I am about what it is I know, what it is I know about America, what it is I know about the issues that we're having in our politics right now, what it is I know about the way people really feel, how much, how deeply people in the United States actually read the same things I'm reading, NPR, the New York Times, how we can have an, a huge conversation about the law, what they think of it. What they think about the law is not what we think. Um, and the slide that just went by tells us all about it's the lawyers are crooked, the Supreme Court makes up new law, and we can't trust anybody. So it's kind of no wonder that we have the kind of racial tensions that we still suffer 50 years after the Civil Rights Movement. It's no wonder with all of the Facebook and the interaction where true conversations are had, as we've all said to each other, online. It's no, it's no surprise that this is something that we just behold and wonder about. So my thought about law students being prepared for clients is that A, they're not very well prepared to be human and to engage. And clients need that the most. What we have is a Tower of Babel, in essence. And I believe that what law schools can do is to help law students learn to talk through that babble, learn to pass around it, give them a listening ear, a listening horn, help them know that their obligation by the time they become a 3L is not just to perform perfectly. They don't need to always give the right answer. They need to ask. They need to ask their Uber driver, ask each other. They need to ask in the clinic. Several of the practical suggestions that you all have offered so far are about that, you know, the emergency line, the self-help line. Those folks will bring us as lawyers and law students into the community. Conversely, I would love to inspire law students and lawyers who know the Constitution and know what our legal system really is to be happy engaging not as the authority lawyer in a community, but as a person with special knowledge lacking knowledge about driving an Uber, 
but helping people to understand where it is our Constitution builds upon our ability to listen. I actually am going to suggest to you that there are three channels of benefits, and they are these three. They're the benefits to law school enrollments, ultimately, which come from benefits to clients, because we will be the lawyers who, like those surgeons that you all pick, are human, are empathic, and understand what it is that you're going through as a, as a patient. In the same way, we as lawyers will do that. And certainly, law students will climb in their Uber and do something other than this. The method, I don't know, but I look forward to learning more. Thank you very much. Thank you.